you're not worthy enough. You're only going to hear that in your mind. So no one's going to send you an email every week or deliver a postcard to you that you're ugly and you're unworthy and you're stupid. You're the only one who's going to do it to yourself. So you need to awaken to this awareness of observing and being aware of the mind is going to be doing this kind of things. And the fact that the mind is playing these games and the mind is going to drag you into past emotional traumas. Okay? So the mind is going to play games with you. It's been playing games with you from ever since of it. you've been a child. And it's going to continue doing it. So it's not really your friend. The monkey mind is not your friend. It's to keep you into the bondage. The illusion of being a slave. And also drags you into your emotional stories of your past. Whatever has happened in your life, it drags you into that. So it makes you being a victim of whatever has happened to you. And there is really no victims here. It can't be. Because there is no separation. There is no others for, for you to be a victim because nobody else was there to victimize you. All of it was what aspects of yourself. So we come into this deal in this life and we're born into this and you're going to have to go through your life lessons, whatever were written for us as we enter into by the creator Ishvari, whatever story and you go through the story and the stuff happens through whatever cosmic contracts we have with these other beings that show up in our lives to beat us, to kick us, to cheat us or whatever. They had to pay their, their role and you had to pay your role to learn what you needed to learn. So there is no victim here. They're just players who show up and play their parts. And yes, it appears to be very painful, it's very traumatic, I understand that. But comes to this point of evolving. And in that evolvement, if you want to move on to the next level of expansion of divine love and freedom, then you have to make a decision to let go of the story. You have to make a decision. You have to look at your past. I'm saying, again, I'm not saying it wasn't traumatizing. I'm not saying that you didn't suffer, okay? I know, but at this point, you need to look at it and not superficially say, I'm going to let go of my past and, oh, I'm going to be in present moment. No, I'm not talking about that is an inner determination of the commitment to freedom is that the recognition of for me to dive into the divine presence and the oneness to the love I cannot drag this garbage bag of my past with me to dive into this pure lake to this beautiful waterfall it's a celestial waterfall the water is falling this turquoise beautiful lake in front of me and i want to go shower into it and be blessed by the presence and you're carrying this toxic filthy garbage bag with you you can't take that existence doesn't allow you to take this bag into that waterfall you have to leave it. 
At one point, you're going to have to decide on doing that. Say, okay, you know what? I'm going to disconnect from it. Yes, the lessons I've learned, I don't need to make the same mistakes again. But I also don't need to carry this stuff with me any longer. So you know what? I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to bring it up. If my mind goes there, I just switch my mind back to this moment. So you need to become attentive to it because you have to do the work. No one else can do it for you. And just be here. And in this shift, in being here, look at what you have now. Okay? What most of you do is you're constantly going to your past and you're bringing your daddy issue, your mommy issue, your abandonment issues. You're constantly going to those stories and it creates suffering. And so then you're missing out what's here. So you're screwed in two places. You were screwed in your childhood and now you're getting screwed now. So you miss, you miss that and you're missing this. And we don't want to do that anymore. At least I, I'm not going to let my students in the life training program that I have, or if you come to my workshop, if I have you to myself for three, four months, I won't let you go there. I'll just bring you back, no matter what it is, to keep you to re-familiar yourself, to recognize of what is here, of the vastness, of the richness of this moment. And the mind will come and say, because it does. Because when I, this is what it does, and I'm going to tell you the trick so you understand, because I walk this thing and I fell into these holes. And I don't want that to happen to you. What happens is that when I take about, talk about the vastness of this moment, the beauty of it, the richness of it, what the person thinks that it has to be a party all the time. And if it's not a party all the time, then it's not vastness. Now I'm going to elaborate on that and explain to you what I mean. Is, for example, when we're doing the workshop together, we're in a seminar or we're doing the academy, and we go into the zone. So. I bring you here in this moment and I make you disconnect from the story, from your emotional stories or whatever, or your fears of future. You fall into the presence and then bliss takes over because there's no mind. You just go into complete bliss. And when we're working together regularly or we're having a seminar or a retreat or workshop, it magnifies because it's like few hours every day of being into this place. So when the workshop ends, then the next day, after three, four days of being in this place, you go back into your ordinary life, then all the problems come and suffering comes and they creep in. The reason for that is what typical student spiritual seeker does is they are still looking for the party there they think that oh if it's not really strong and it just doesn't blow my mind away and i'm not really just completely in ecstasy then it's not happening in this moment 